For this video, I want to show you how to solve a polynomial inequality using its graph. Now, since the graph will be an integral part to this entire process, let's go ahead and review that process really quick and see what we'll do. In the graphing process, we'll take a look at the leading term so we can figure out its end behavior. That way we'll know if the end behavior is both facing up or down, or maybe they're both in different directions. Then we'll go ahead and factor the polynomial so we can find its x-intercepts. So we'll know exactly where it crosses the x-axis. Uh, you could use additional test points for accuracy, uh, but at this point we're only really concerned whether it's either above the x-axis or below the x-axis. Alright, so the example problem I want to look at is x cubed plus 4x squared minus 11x minus 30 is less than 0. With all of the inequalities, it's easier if you get them in relation to 0. So this one's already set up and good to go, and we want to start thinking about its graph. The very first leading term in here will give me information about its end behavior. Since it is odd, I know that the end behavior is 1 down and 1 up. Awesome. Now that we have the end behavior, we want to start thinking about the zeros of this polynomial. So there's many techniques you could go through, uh, but basically you want to take the entire polynomial and factor it. Now I've already done this one earlier, so I'm just going to show what the factored form looks like. It's x minus 3, x plus 2, and x plus 5. So I still want to know where this polynomial is less than zero. Now be very careful. A very common mistake is to take each of these factors and set them less than zero, but that uh, will not work out. In fact, you'll often end up with uh, an answer that doesn't make any sense. Instead, let's go ahead and graph using these uh, factors and our end behavior, and you'll see where we uh, can actually compare it to be less than or greater than zero. So first let's mark out uh, all of our x-intercepts. We want to think of each of these factors and where they could equal 0. So x minus 3 equals 0 when x equals 3, x plus 2 equals 0 when x equals a negative 2, and x plus 5 equals 0 when x equals a negative 5. So let's go ahead and put these points on here. So negative 5, there's one, a negative 2, there's another one, and 3. All right. From the end behavior, I know that I have one facing down and one facing up. So something like that. And since each of the powers on the factors are odd, it will go through each of these points. So through negative 5, through negative 2, through 3, reach my other end behavior. All right. Now here's where the part uh, of comparing to 0 really comes into play. We want to know where our polynomial is less than zero. So essentially we're looking at the bottom half of this graph because everything down here is less than zero. So we get a, a few places where our graph is actually less than zero. Anytime we're using x values that are less than minus five, our graph will be less than zero. And also when we're between negative two and three, it will also be less than zero. So let's go ahead and write down those intervals as our answer. So when we are from negative infinity all the way up to negative 5, uh, sure enough our graph will be less than 0. Also, put our little union symbol in there, from negative 2 up to 3, I'm sorry, negative 2 up to 3, it will also be less than 0. So in these intervals, uh, our polynomial less than zero. Now let's go ahead and look at one more example just to make sure that uh, we can you know get more practice. So this next one to solve I have 2x cubed plus 8x squared is all greater than or equal to x to the fourth. In our very first step let's get everything over to one side so that it's in relation to zero. So I'm going to subtract an x to the fourth from both sides. So I still have a 2x cubed plus 8x squared, now greater than or equal to 0. Now that's an important step because then we essentially need to see whether it's above or below the x-axis. 
All right, looking at this, let's get our end behavior for our graph. So the leading term is uh, negative, and its power is even. What that means about my end behavior is that they're both facing in the same direction, because it's even, uh, but they're both facing down. All right, now that I have my end behavior, let's go ahead and figure out uh, some x-intercepts. Uh, looks like everything in here, I can factor out an x squared and also take a negative sign with it. Let's see, so this will leave me an x squared minus 2x minus 8. Okay, not too shabby. And factor out a little bit more x minus 4 and x plus 2. So now from each of these factors I can figure out where it crosses the x-axis. Alright, let's jump to that step. So each of these factors I want to figure out where it is equal to 0. So this first one is equal to 0 when x is equal to 0. So I have that point right there. Uh, x minus 4 is equal to 0 when x equals 4. We have that. And let's see, when x equals a negative 2, this last factor will equal 0. From our end behavior, we know that both uh, ends are facing down. So we have down and down. And now we'll just fill in the rest. So for every odd factor, it will go through. For every even factor, it will touch. So it looks like we're going through at negative 2, we're touching at 0, we're going through at 4. Awesome. Alright, now that we have a nice rough sketch of this thing, I want to figure out where is my polynomial greater than or equal to 0. So for the greater than or equal to part, we'll be looking at the upper half of our graph. So it looks like it's definitely greater than or equal to 0 anywhere between negative 2 all the way up to 4. It's also equal to 0 at negative 2, 0, and 4. So let's go ahead and write this interval. So from negative 2 all the way up to 4, the polynomial is greater than or equal to 0. Now note in this case that we're including these places where it crosses the x-axis, the negative 2 and the 4, and especially that 0, because it says greater than or equal to zero. All right, so just with a rough sketch of your polynomial, you can easily figure out your polynomial inequalities.